Okay, so year two. Where did we leave it? I think we left it. Basically, we we discussed the central dogma of biology. What a what a way to start. Okay, we discussed how uh, the genetic information in the D gene gives us the mRNA. Basically, how transcription happens, how then translation happens to give us um, a polypeptide, right, with a very specific um, primary structure, okay, and then because it has that primary structure, it folds into a particular tertiary structure, that gives it a particular function, right, shape relates to function, okay, now what we're, what we're going to look at is this next concept, which kind of just consolidates that idea. Okay, and that is about mutations. So how does, how do mutations affect this? Okay, so I think what we'll just discuss today, just to keep it kind of short and sweet, is one type of mutation. All right, so there's, there's like different types of mutations which um, affect the DNA on a on a scale that goes from kind of minor or, 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 or no change all the way to drastic change okay and, and these mutations you know sometimes the change can be very small with wide-reaching effects and sometimes the change can be very very big okay so what we are going to talk about is is simply um, the small mutations that affect single genes, okay, because there are mutations that affect entire chromosomes, right, but we're just going to focus on small changes that might happen to genes and use that to kind of consolidate, sorry, this consolidate is such a non-relaxed word, okay, we're just going to use, we're just going to make sure that we get uh, we're going to use, we're going to apply the idea of mutations, right, and and then use that to make sure that we get the idea of why the sequence of bases in the DNA, why that is so important to the function, okay? All right, so let's begin then. So yesterday we, we had a, um, a sequence that we were um, using to, to model how amino, or how, how the bases in the gene results in a certain sequence of amino acids in the protein, okay? Um, so, no reason why we can't just um, copy that, I guess. Uh, it was quite long, wasn't it? Um, C, do, 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 GTC, AGC, ba, ba, ba. actually, let's just make something up, it's fine. Um, A T G T T A A A C G T A. Okay, so we've got these, and these are our three triplets. Now let's just say that this is the gene. Okay, so this is the gene. Uh, we've got a C. You know, we've got our triplets here. Okay, um, and let's just carry out some transcription and, and see what we should get. So that's our gene. Just change my color. Let's change it to blue. Okay, now let's look at the mRNA. The mRNA will be a complementary sequence to that, remember, but RNA doesn't have um, any T bases. It has U instead. So uh, A will give us T, will give us U, right, U, A, C, followed by A, A, U, followed by U, U, G, followed by C, A, U. Okay, now, this is where we need the genetic code. Okay, let's see if this is going to be easy. Genetic code. Okay, wasn't so easy. Let's just drag it down from there. 
All right, got my genetic code. Don't want any of that. Don't want that. Okay, so let's see now the genetic code. What does it give us? Well, that genetic code is going to so which amino acid. So now we are looking at the protein, right? So now we're looking at the peptide. So we're looking at the primary structure of the protein. So what would that give us? So the first amino acid, UAC, UAC, that was close, nearly picked a stop code on there. Um, you, no, I didn't. UAC, so, oh yeah, I did. UAC would give me tyrosine. Okay, AAU then, AAU, asparagine. And then UUG, UUG would give me leucine. And finally, uh, we have CAU. CAU would give me CAU would give me histidine. Okay, um, you can leave a comment if I, if I make a mistake and I'll address it in the next um, episode, if you will. Um, right, so then we have these four amino acids. Now, what are so how would a mutation affect this that's the story okay so let's look at this now um and i will i'll note down changes in red okay so let's say you know let's say we have a substitution okay a substitution so that means that when at some point dna was being replicated Okay, and instead of one of these correct bases, we had something else um, inserted in its place. So let's say we had a substitution that changed um, this T, changed that T into a C. That's a substitution. Okay, that's a substitution. All right, so what happens then? So let's see how that would impact. So when translation happens then, instead of that A being put into place, the uh, RNA polymerase would see that C and put a G in that position. Okay, now if UGC is that codon, then, then when translation happens, instead of the um, tRNA, the ribosome, reading UAC as the first codon, it would read UGC. So UGC gives us cysteine. So instead of tyrosine, we would have cysteine. What difference does that make? Well, remember that the tertiary structure is, is the shape, right? And the shape determines the function of the protein, how it works. And how it works is crucial to the functions of cells. Cell function and cell function is important for tissue function. And tissue function is important for organ function. And organ function is important for the functioning of the organism. Okay. All right. So, so we've changed an amino acid, so what? Okay, now what we're saying is, remember, so if we're saying that the shape is important for the function and the function of a protein is important for the whole organism, well, and sorry about that, I know it's a relaxed discussion and, and we're talking about, you know, organisms not working properly and it's getting deep. I can't avoid that, okay? But, um, we're talking about the tertiary structure and remember what causes the tertiary structure to be what it is. It is the R group interactions. The R group interactions. Okay, so what we're saying is that by possibly changing, now I'll just remind you what those R group interactions are. Okay, remember we have disulfide bonds. Okay, I'll just remind you of what an amino acid is, just in case. 
just in case, okay? N H H R C O O H. Okay. Now the the carboxyl group is involved in connecting to the next amino acid. The amino group is involved in connecting to the previous amino acid. And remember, it's the R groups in the polypeptide that interact with each other to give the protein its tertiary structure. And those R group interactions are disulfide bonds, ionic bonds, um, hydrogen bonds, and nonpolar interactions, shall we call them. Nonpolar interactions. And so what we're saying is that it is having those specific amino acids means we have those particular R groups in particular positions in the protein. But we switch out an amino acid and what that's going to cause is a difference in one of or some of these interactions. Okay, if you have an ionic bond between a, a positive R group and a negative R group, and suddenly you switch out that amino acid with the negative R group, and suddenly you've switched it out for an amino acid that is a positive R group, well, suddenly instead of attraction, you're going to get re repelling between those R groups, and that's going to cause you know um, further impact on the overall folding of the protein. Okay. So what we're saying is that by causing a change in this amino acid, because we caused it, so because we caused a change in the DNA, that resulted in the change in the mRNA codons, that results in a change in the amino acids, okay? And because that caused change in the amino acids, potentially is going to impact on these R group interactions. That's going to then impact on the tertiary structure, which affects shape, which affects the function of the protein, which can have bigger impact on how the organism functions. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it there, short and sweet, okay, just to consider that, it, that if there's a change in the DNA, what impact it could it have on a protein? Okay, next time what we will discuss is uh, perhaps uh, the different types of changes that could happen, okay, and, and maybe the seriousness of those effects. Okay, all right guys, um, I hope this has been a nice chill little revision video opportunity for you. Um, yeah, and I will leave it here guys. I did get a useful question and I think um, since we're having this chilled out discussion, uh, I did get a question about how do you keep yourself motivated when you got to do work that you really don't want to do? And I think this might be the right forum to discuss that. Well, you know, a few things that can help. A few things are, one, you know, divide your study jobs into things that require a lot of your brain, things and, and things that don't. And when you're low on that motivation, try and do those jobs where, you know, you can just switch your brain off and just do those. Like for me, that was sometimes um, transferring my notes, condensing my notes, sometimes um, sometimes just reading, maybe skim reading the textbook um, before a lesson. So all those things help, but not necessarily take up a lot of your effort, like unlike maybe um, uh, doing exam questions or, or working on a concept that you find difficult. So try and divide you know, the things that you do into easy things and hard things. And when you find yourself low on motivation, focus on the easier things. Second, second, try and make that studying process a little bit more attractive to yourself. For me, that was maybe putting on some music, um, maybe like making myself a cup of tea or something, just kind of, you know, bribing myself to just get down, sit down and work. You know, that might help. And finally, um, one kind of quick thing to try is maybe set rewards for yourself. So um, perhaps, um, you know, tell yourself that, well, if you, if you get, if, you know, if you just finish this piece of work, then you can take a break and do something that you find fun, playing a computer game, watching a movie, watching a show, reading a book, I don't know, going out for a walk, doing some exercise. Um, 
maybe having like a little treat for yourself, like a chocolate bar or something, or a cake. Or, you know, I don't want to. Uh, whatever you find kind of um, you know rewarding for yourself, maybe just push that reward back and just tell yourself, well, okay, I can have that thing that I want, but only after I've done this thing that I maybe don't want to do. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, we'll leave it there. Um, uh, you know, please put your comments down in, in the video and, you know, it hopefully informs kind of further discussions that we might have in this series. Um, uh, let me know if you're finding the format useful or if the format can do with some changes. I'm very open to that. But I think, you know, I, I, want, I want to change my, my content, my videos into kind of things that it's easier for me to do so I can do it more often and maybe um, also it's, it's a bit more uh, useful for you. Okay guys, thank you very much and I'll see you next time and hopefully that's quite soon.